see everybody. I'm glad the wind didn't blow everybody away. And I mean, I think tomorrow, if the forecast is anywhere close to it, we might get to play in a little bit of snow tomorrow evening. I mean, might get to stay out to 7, 8 o'clock just to get enough for a new donuts and all that. Yeah. How, many, how many would join me in playing in the snow? Uh, <laughs> well, it's good to have everybody here at Mount Harvest Church this morning. I hope everybody's had a very blessed weekend so far. And we're going to go to uh, and worship the Lord. And the first song is going to be off my way, an old song. And just think about it, you know, when, uh, when the Lord calls us home in the twink of an eye, it's going to happen so fast. Nobody will see us go up. And, but we're going to take a flight that's faster than anything. It's faster than the speed of light. And so just think about this song as we sing it. Y'all help us. Hold on, this is really the life I'm living Cause I don't feel like I 
teaching will uh, help to cause you to think and everything. So and before we get started in the Word, let's do our confession of faith. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. Your heart's receptive, heart's receptive. about to receive, yeah. the incorruptible, yeah. indestructible, yeah. every living seed, seed. the word of God. God. I'll never be saved. Never, 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 never. never, never, never. I'll never be saved in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't you be turning in your Bible to Luke chapter 8. And... Uh, Lord started dealing with me about this message probably Wednesday morning. 
And it's probably one that isn't that often spoken on or about. But when I saw it, it, it caught my attention. And uh, so here we are today. And uh, so you got your, if you're ready in Luke chapter 8, we'll be reading uh, parts of it, verses 26 through 29. In verse 26, they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils, long time, wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. But when when he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and feathers, and he broke the bands and was driven out of the devil into the into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were in entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go into the deep. Alright, Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you've let us come together to worship you, to thank you, Lord to study your word, to, to understand your word, and to get something out of your word. And so, Lord, we just praise you for that. We thank you, Lord, for our, our spirits to be open, our minds to be alert, and, Lord, to, to just grasp the meaning and to give you honor and glory and praise. And in the precious name of Jesus, all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Now, as we read there, there was a certain man. So this was not a parable. This wasn't a, a made-up story. This was an actual, factual event that took place. And uh, Gadarenes uh, was predominantly Gentile uh, region around uh, Gadara. And is also known as the Ten Towns. And uh, it was also known for raising pigs, which the Jewish people would not do because it was a forbidden food. Uh, Jewish people were to eat pigs. How many of us like ham, pork chops, bacon, side meat, fat back? You see, we weren't raised in Jewish tradition because we, we were raised as Gentiles. We were sinners from birth. <laughs> And uh, so, uh, but they, but the Jewish people, uh -uh, we not have nothing to do with those pigs. And uh, this man had plural devils. And when Jesus asked him what his name was, he said legion. Well, according to Romans, a legion could be anywhere from 3,000 to 6,000 in numbers. <coughs> So can you imagine, here this man is, demon-possessed with more than we can imagine. I mean, we look, you know, we're one person and you go in a facility and there's 6,000 people in it. I mean, has there been in a church service where there's been 6,000 or more? I have. And can you imagine all them, if they were one, or if they were demons, Put in one body. That's why this man, he they wouldn't let him in town. They had to, they bound him with leather straps, with chains and everything, and he broke them. He was out here living, and where it said tombs, it can also refer to as caves because there was caves in that vicinity where this took place. And so he's basically living naked out in the wild, in the wilderness because he was so demonic possessed. And uh, 
But, uh, you know, what some people don't realize is that demons are real. And they are still active today, still trying to destroy people's lives. They are messengers of Satan. And they can be powerful. They can be destructive, especially in destroying relationships with God. That's why uh, don't let curiosity cause you to try and learn more about witchcraft and stuff like that. It'll get you in trouble. You know, the whole saying is curiosity killed the cat. Well, if you start messing with the demonic things, you're going to end up wishing you had. Best thing is just keep focused on God, just keep uh, reaching for God. But notice the reaction when Jesus showed up. What happened? They fell down at the feet of Jesus. And they begged him basically not to send them where it says into the deep is also where, if you read in Revelation, it talks about where Satan will be thrown and his angels and demons into the bottomless pit or the abyss for a thousand years. They know where that is, and they wanted no part of it. Now, if the demons don't want no part of it, why do People won't say a taste of hell. They don't. And uh, the demons, of course, knew all about this place. Confinement didn't want to go there. Question is, and this is an age-old question, why didn't Jesus just go ahead and destroy the demons right there? You ever thought about that? Why didn't he just destroy them? Hmm. Well, because it, his time to do the work wasn't yet. And he healed many of the demonic oppression. He delivered this man from that. Yet he didn't destroy the demons. Now they begged him, what does it say uh, in verse 32? And there was there a herd of many swine or pigs, feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. He said, okay, go on, get in the pigs. And then with the devils, or demons, out of the man, entered into the pigs, or swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. In other words, the pigs drowned with the demons. Now, I don't know where the demons went, if they could survive underwater or not. They're spirits, so they're not like us. I know that if we choked, we would drown. The pigs drowned. And, uh, you know, uh, the same question could be asked today. Why doesn't Jesus stop all the evil in the world? Because it's not his time. You read Revelation. And Revelation says there's coming a time that there's going to be seven years of tribulation, three and a half of the less and three and a half of the, of the great. And then after that, there's going to be a thousand year millennium that's when Satan and all the demons and that fallen name are going to be cast into the abyss, the bottomless pit, for a thousand years. Then they're going to be released for a season. And then that's going, the Lord's going to destroy them all. And in the process of it, why? Because his time isn't right. Now, go to Luke chapter 16. And this is going to relate to why and what the demons were really afraid of. And in this story, I mean, 
I've got probably, there, there's probably five messages here, five different sermons, and I'm trying to shorten them into one. But here in Luke chapter 16, in verse 19, there was a certain rich man. Okay, so this is not a parable. This is factual. It's about a certain person which was clothed in purple and fine linen, fared sumptuously every day. In other words, lived well. He was rich. He didn't have a need for anything. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus. Now, this is not the same Lazarus of Mary and Martha that Jesus raised from the dead out of the tomb, and which was laid at his gate full of sores, Desiring to be fed with crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sword. Came to pass that the beggar died, was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Now, this is where there's a difference. Lazarus knew God. The rich man did. And in hell, this is talking about the rich man, lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abram afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father, Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. Hmm. But Abraham said, Son, remember thou that thou in thy lifetime received the good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art told him. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from thence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. In other words, this was before Jesus was crucified, resurrected, and ascended to heaven. And you either went to one or two places back then. If you was faithful to God, you went to paradise where Abraham was. If you were a sinner, like this rich man was, didn't believe in God, he went to hell, also known as Hades, also known as Sheol or Purgatory. And in it, he could see into paradise. Those in paradise could not see him. Uh, the rich man would be there till the great judgment before the white throne of God. <coughs> he's there today. And he's still begging today for somebody to just somebody give a drop of water and touch his tongue because the torment is never ending. We find that hell is a conscious existence. You know who you are. You know who you left behind. Because you can read Father, and he, he even begged Abraham, let somebody go tell my brothers. And Abraham tells, hey, the prophets have preached. And if they don't believe them, you didn't believe them. And they're not going to believe them either. The reality in torment hell, there's no second chance after death. You have to have your life right with the Lord before you take your last breath. The, it's the impossibility of the dead communicating with the living. Abraham says it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That's why these soothsayers or these uh, uh, mediums that 
uh, are so well known, used to be on TV all the time. They conjure up demonic spirits. They can't conjure up the dead. Because they're either in heaven, heaven or hell. Two men, two different lives, and two different destinies. Now, go to Mark chapter 9. Want to know about him? Let's see what it's like. Because here we're going to see three times Jesus relates to hell where the fire is never quenched. And he relates three times where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. In verse 43, If I hand offend thee, cut it off, it is better to it, it, thee to enter into life main than go having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that is never quenched. For the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And if I put offend thee, cut it off, it's better to, for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to cast into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. For the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. If I offend thee, Pluck it out, it's better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God having one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. For the worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And what God, what Jesus was saying is, learn to control what you do. Learn to control the direction that you walk. Don't go to places that you have no business being there. Don't be picking up things that you have no business picking up that's going to get you in trouble. Don't be looking at things that's going to cause you to mess up. Don't do it. Because you'd be better off if you hadn't, didn't have the eyes to see or the hands to pick up or the feet to walk you in the wrong direction. He wasn't telling you to literally cut your hand off or you pluck your eye out or, or your foot off. But he was telling you to learn to control what you do. Because once you get there, that's the point of no return. Hell is a horrible place. There won't be no parties. There won't be no associating with one another. No one has to go there. That's what's so great about our God. He has made a way to escape this dreadful, dreadful place. Turn to Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, a very well-known verse, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. How many? Me, you, every one of us, we've all messed up. Some messed up more than others. Some of y'all might be so good that it makes a lot of Christians blush. But then some of you might have been like me that blush at the thought of saying anything about what you've done because you've lived such a, a bad life. All sin and come short of the glory of God. But notice, there's not a period there. It continues on in verse 24. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Being justified freely. What's that mean? Justify. Just as if I had never sinned. And guess how much it cost me? Nothing. It's free. Jesus did it so it doesn't cost me nothing to be free from all my sins, faults, and failures. So that I don't have to go to hell. I can go to heaven where there will be joy forever and ever. See, he didn't have to, but he did. He made a way for us 
to not have to go there. Look at chapter 5 of Romans, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, being justified just as if I've never sinned by faith that Jesus, when he went to the cross, that he paid everything that was necessary so I could have a relationship with God the Father. That's the love of God toward us. And sometimes people say, well, you just don't know what I've done. You just don't know how much God loves you. Because He did it. Knowing that while we were yet sinners, He made a way that we could be set free from that. Our faith in Christ Jesus brings peace with God the Father. Look at verse 8 and 9. But God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by His blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through Him. Wow, hallelujah! I don't have to worry about the wrath of God coming on me because I was such a sinner. I accepted Jesus Christ. He cleansed my life up. He's justified as if I'd never done nothing wrong. And he says, huh, you're clean. When I see you, I see my son. Just as if I'd never seen him. Why? Because he gave us his love while we were yet sinners. You can't. You can't get a better gift than that. We just went through Christmas. And a lot of kids got a lot of things. And a lot of people got a lot of things. And a lot of people were happy. And then there was some probably disappointed. But I can tell you right now, the gift that Jesus gave us is never ending. It's good. Look back at St. John chapter 3. Everybody knows John 3.16, but do we quote John 17 enough? For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hmm. Hmm. Jesus didn't come condemned. He didn't come, he didn't condemn the the adulterous woman that they brought, caught in the very act, and didn't bring me out, brought the woman. He didn't condemn the, woman, the Samaritan woman at the well. He didn't condemn the blind man. He didn't, there's a lot of people he didn't condemn. Why? Because the world's done condemn. He came to set us free. He came to give us eternal life, that we don't have to go to hell, where the worm dieth not. How many have ever seen roadkill? You know, you see a deer laying on the side of the road, fresh kill, might be a small deer. That deer lays there for a couple of days and no buzzers come by, and that deer looks like it is swollen up. It's not because it grew, it's because of the maggots inside that deer. And that's why it's going to be in hell. You're going to be eaten from inside out forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. The fire will never quit. The pain from the fire. How many of y'all ever got burned on a stove? Probably every one of us, unless you're young and you've never met. But if you've been burned, you know that burn, it lasts for a long time. You put ice on it and you hope that, and, that it quits that you got the ice on in time. But a burn is bad. You've got hospitals that specialize in third degree burns. That's pretty bad, isn't it? Can you imagine your whole body being third degree burn for eternity? And there is not one thing that you can ever, 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 ever do to get relief from it. That's why it's so important to 
Love Jesus while you've got the opportunity. Go back to Luke chapter 8. We'll continue on where we left off. In Luke chapter 8, we read there for in verse 33, where the devils, demons, out of men entered into the swine and heard ran violently down a steep place into the lake were choked. In verse 34, when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Verse 35, then they out went out to see what was done, came to Jesus, found the man out of whom the de devils or demons were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. They were afraid. They were afraid of this guy before he got delivered, so now here he is sitting like a natural, normal human being, clothed, cleaned, and listening to Jesus, and they were afraid. They also, verse 36, they also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils were healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. So Jesus, he, he went, back, went up into the ship and returned back again. Hmm. Can you imagine that? Yeah. The reaction of the people. Why were they not excited about this man that had raised havoc all around about, terrorized the community? People were afraid to go out there because the madman, the wild man, and all of a sudden, he is normal. And they weren't happy. Well, they lost their, their wealth because the swine died in the lake. That upset them. How many knows that sometimes money is more important than the soul of a person? And that's what happened right here. Those people around Gadarene was more concerned about their welfare than the soul of one demonic possessed person. Isn't that sad? Are we concerned about the lost and the dying enough that we will take time to give them the Word of God? Think about it. They wanted Jesus to leave. I would have thought, why not celebrate, have a, a party for them? Lord knows Galax. Sometimes they do some strange things. Certain people can get killed doing certain things and not living godly. And they'll have a, they'll, they'll make it into something that they can raise money. And you're wondering, this person wasn't living for God. Don't even know if they've ever been saved. Don't know if they ever accepted Jesus. And you have all types of these events every year to honor them so you can make money. See, we people in America have got everything twisted and perverted. They were not thankful for this demon-possessed man being delivered. Their concerns was only were the loss they had taken from the swine being gone. Mm -hmm. Verse 38. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away. In other words, this man, this man said, Jesus, can I follow you? Jesus, you're the only person that's ever came to me <clears throat> and gave me some relief. I'll follow you anywhere, Jesus. 
And Jesus said, return to thy own house and show how great things of God have done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Now, I don't know how many lives he impacted. I hope he impacted a whole lot of people. I hope a lot of those that had asked Jesus to leave got to think, and you know what? If the demons, if the demons were afraid of the deep, the bottomless pit, should they not be afraid of hell? See, hell's going to be cast in the lake of fire, and the lake of fire is never ending also. It don't never end. You hear people say, well, when I get to hell, we're going to celebrate, we're going to party. No, you won't. You won't know anybody. You'll be able to see everybody else, and you wish that you could just be there with them, but they can't see you. You know, Revelation says that God shall wipe away every tear. Maybe it's because there might be one brief moment when God's people get there and they see that somebody that they hoped had made it didn't make it. And God wipes that tear away. You see, people don't always think about the person that is going through something. Like this man, like Lazarus. Don't look at it like that. Yet this person was glad to finally be set free from the bondage of the demonic spirits that had tormented him for so long. But never be concerned about what people think. You know, that's one, I think, the problem is sometimes people think, well, what, what's people going to think? Don't think about that. Think what God has done. When I think about what God has done for me, the thing that I need, want to go back into the old life, the old love, God's done too much for me. Ain't no way I want to go back to that lifestyle. When we understand that God loves us, regardless of what type of life we've been through, because I'll tell you, you may, have, you may have lived a life with just minor bumps along the way. But then, while others may have lived a life that's like been to heaven back. That's why we need to celebrate the gift that is freely given through faith in Jesus Christ. Accept eternal life with our Lord and Savior. Because hell is lonely and nothing but torment beyond what you can ever, ever possibly imagine. And anybody thinks that they want to go there, take a moment. If anything, touch something that burns your skin a little bit and then just imagine that's your whole body that's going to feel that pain never ending. Never ending. There is no drop of water. There is nothing to relieve it. It is something that you don't want. I'm so thankful that God had a plan. From the time that Adam and Eve messed up, that God started working out the plan of salvation from the beginning of Genesis all the way to the end of Revelation. God has made a way for people to escape His wrath. It's not for God's people, but it's for those that refuse to accept Jesus Christ. <coughs> As Joshua said, choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Because I believe that I had rather walk 
in paradise because heaven's going to be like paradise. I don't know if they're going to be mountains. I don't know if it's going to be ocean. I don't know what it's going to be like. I just know that the city's going to be huge, 1,500 by 1,500 by 1,500, made of every precious stone that you can think of, streets of pure gold, like a guy that getting ready to die and he got well he, he died and he got to the the pearly gates, met Peter, and uh, he told Peter, he said, Before I enter in, I've got some stuff back at the house I need to get. Can you please, please let me go get it? And Peter said, we don't do this. Once you're here, you're here. He said, but I've got to have it. And Peter said, okay, go get it. This one time. And the guy came back and he's got sacks. And Peter said, what in the world is so precious that you had to have here? And the guy opened it up and it was Bars of gold. And Peter looked at him and said, You brought dirt. That's just pavement. Don't we get our minds messed up here once in a while? We need to know that Jesus loves us. In paradise, in heaven, you're not going to have no want. You're not going to have no need. And you will. It's not going to be just sitting around. It's going to be busy. But if you don't make it, that's the question. Are you ready? I ask those that are here, those that are watching and will be watching, if you've got your heart right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you don't, you don't know that you'll make it through the rest of the day. I hope you do. But the main thing is know that you've been born again. Know that you've repented of your sin. And you had your life right with Jesus. Then you'll know that you know that when you take your last breath, you'll never suffer another moment. To a Christian, this is the closest to hell we get. To the non-believer, the sinner, this is the closest to heaven they'll ever get. So choose which way you want to go. So, if you've never accepted Jesus, we'll pray a simple prayer. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth and sense of salvation. If you backslid on God, First John, or, yeah, First John chapter 1, verse 9. John wrote this to the believers, to the Christians. It says, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. That's to the backslide. That's to the one that, that messed up. And sometimes they mess up, they keep messing up, and they feel like, I'm unworthy. And God says, all you got to do, I'm waiting. Confess. So let's pray. Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I repent of my sins. I ask for forgiveness. I believe you paid my sin debt. And by faith, you freely justified me. And it's not my glory, but it's your glory, Lord. Because it's only through you, Jesus Christ, that I can be forgiven and my sins cleansed. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that from this day forward, I can live for you and serve you and expect an eternal life with you in a place beyond our greatest expectation. So I thank you, Lord. And in the name of Jesus Christ, amen.
Remember Tuesday night, Wednesday night Bible study, 7 o'clock. About 6.30, but 7 o'clock. Look forward to being with you then. And may God bless you. And see you Tuesday evening.